Well, hi there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is my majesty, King David I of the United States, AKA David Toy, also known as Uncle Dave on the Right Wing Redneck Radio Rag. And I am very honored today to have as my special guest, all the way from Belgium, Marie. Marie, welcome to the program. Thank you. And I understand that uh, the Islamic population in Belgium has been expanding very rapidly. What, uh, what, what can you tell us about that? Yes, the population has been expanding very rapidly. Uh, we have currently about 500,000 uh, uh, Muslims in Belgium. The population of Belgium is 10.5 million inhabitants. It, uh, Belgium is the size of Maryland. And uh, we have uh, mainly problems in Brussels, which is the capital city of Belgium. And it is believed that by the year 2020, Brussels will be the first Muslim capital city in the European Union. Wow, so they will be the ruling factor in, in, in the capital city or in the whole country? Well, starting first in the capital city and they are, uh, there are a, a, a large group also living in other cities like Antwerp and they are causing a lot of problems there, a lot of an, un, uh, security. Uh, in, in, in the big cities, in some big cities in Belgium. And the Belgians themselves are moving out of Brussels because Be uh, Brussels has become a very dangerous city. And uh, recently a European survey was conducted in the 27 uh, European countries and Brussels came nearly on top of one of the most dangerous cities uh, in the European Union. Well, um, do the uh, political leaders there, the officials in your country, and the, the news media there, do they seem to be aware of the problem and concerned about it, or are they kind of like ours, turning a blind eye in the name of uh, political correctness, and what's, what's happening that way? Yes, they are turning a, a blind eye because uh, it was uh, mainly the, the French-speaking parties, the Socialist Party, who, who let them come in, because uh, you have to know that once a Muslim set foot on, uh, on, on the Belgian soil, the whole family comes over. Why? Because in Belgium, uh, you don't need to, to be a Belgian citizen, and you can become a Belgian citizen very rapidly, in a couple of months. You get unemployment benefits, you get all sorts of social allowances for your children, so they have a lot of children and they don't have to work and the whole family can come over. And so that's why this population has been expanding very rapidly and uh, very fast. Now the authorities are trying to change the trend uh, to limit uh, uh, immigration but the problem is it's too late. It's a little bit too late. Kind of closing the door after the horse is gone yeah, already. Yeah. Now, you, you mentioned the Socialist Party over there, um, and you have a kind of a socialized uh, health care program over there, do you not? Yeah, and yes, how is do. that working for the people in general and for the Muslim population? Well, uh, everybody has uh, free access to health care, and uh, you have to know that the M Muslim population came over to Western Europe because there they can get health care. So you don't, you don't see a lot of Muslims in Eastern, in the, in, in the ex-Eastern countries. And so uh, they have uh, free access to our health care, but what Belgians criticize is uh, that in many cases they have their families who stayed in, in their uh, home country, like for example Morocco, who come over to have their health care in Belgium and then they go back to their country and they don't pay any taxes. And so uh, the middle class is very angry about that because, you know, if you are a Belgian citizen and you go to hospitals, you, there are many bills you have to pay. So it's unfair, we believe it's unfair that the Belgian citizens have to pay bills 
and uh, that uh, some imported people, people from outside, don't have to pay these bills because supposedly they cannot pay these bills. Now, I, I know in France there are several no-go zones where um, I have heard that even police and fire departments won't go in there because it's just too dangerous that uh, they put their, their life on the line if they cross that line and go into the no-go zone. Do you have some of those type of uh, neighborhoods in, uh, in Belgium? Yes, uh, we, we, we have some quarters in Brussels to uh, what is called Molenbeek, uh, which is called, uh, we call it Molenbeek, and, uh, well, uh, Molenbeek and uh, Scarbeek. And uh, during the Ramadan, uh, uh, police officers uh, are told not to eat or drink. So they, they, they don't do the Ramadan, but you know, because uh, these, uh, the Muslims are doing the Ramadan, everybody should follow their rules. And in many cases, they are afraid of the mob. If you ar arrest Muslims, there are social unrests, you know and the police uh, are afraid of them. Yes, I'm afraid we're g getting into the same type of situations here. I know uh, Ezekiel Emanuel, who was Rahm Emanuel's uh, brother and advisor to the president, said that our doctors here in the United States have the Hippocratic growth all wrong. They say, he says, that uh, doctors are not supposed to do the best they can for their patient, but the best they can for society as a whole. So when people reach a certain age, then don't really spend money on them. Just you know, give them end of life counseling every year, which is in the Obama's Kevorkian health care plan, and they give them pain pills and, and that. Uh, are the elderly well taken care of in your country, or do you find that that's not the case? Uh, if you would ask them, they would say yes. But in reality, if you are a little bit educated and you can read between the lines. Uh, doctors are told not to give the best care to, to the patients over uh, 75 years in some hospitals, you know, you should not spend uh, too much money. Or they tell you if you want, want to have the best treatment, you have to pay a huge amount of money. So, uh, so it's quite expensive then for the yes. people. Now, I, I understand in France that uh, where they have some very major problems similar to what you're describing, uh, where the Muslims block off streets illegally to have prayer meetings and things, that uh, may be a little too late, but now some of the French population is uh, opposing it by having beer, wine, and barbecue pork parties in the street to annoy the Islams or to try to stand up for themselves. Do you find that the population in general, not the elitists or whatever, but just the, the average man and woman on the street, that they, that they are starting to get a snoop full of the Islamic takeover and, and Yes, uh, they, they did a survey, the European Commission did a survey recently and 71% um, uh, um, of the Belgian uh, population uh, said that they found that the, the multicultural society imposed to them did not work. So they were against it and I have to add that uh, when I come to America, I notice a huge difference in the behavior of the Muslim if I compare with the Muslim population in Europe. Because, you know, 10 or 20 uh, years ago, the Muslim population was not as important as it is now. So the Muslims are a minority in America. So in America, they are smiling, they are very kind, and they don't demand anything. Whereas in Europe, they are a strong group of over 50 million people and now they demand, you know, they want halal food served in schools and prisons, you know. Uh, for example, I went to a hospital in Brussels at Saint-Pierre Hospital and I was surprised because there was a praying room there. For example, the patients can go there and I saw some workers in the hospital go there and pray. But you know, in Belgium, if you are a Catholic, for example, you cannot stop working and go uh, praying, you know. But for the Muslim population, there are exceptions.
you know. So different rules for different folks over there. Yes, but um, it's only the Muslim population who, who get everything they want. Uh, what, uh, what advice would you give the citizenry and the politicians and the press? What advice would you give them here in the United States regarding Islam? Well, I think uh, you, you have to take the example of Europe where the European themselves say it is too late. And I think a lot of people have been open-minded and very welcoming to these people. And now they regret it because these people behave very badly. Uh, they, they, they demand too many things, they want to uh, impose Sharia law. So what I would say, for example, you have in the US, like in Belgium, like in Europe, public schools, state schools paid by the government. Why would you serve halal food and, and not, for example, in Belgium, uh, the, the majority of the population is Catholic and, and they don't want to serve, you know, uh, fish on Friday. Right. Yes, so they shouldn't do that. I mean, they should be very strict with the Muslims and not give them uh, what they want, okay? You want to eat halal food, eat it at home, you know, mm -hmm. and don't demand it when you go to, to jail or in, uh, in public hospitals or in, in hospitals or in schools or where, wherever they go. And don't be naive and think because they are not smart, they are smiling, that these people are 100% uh, uh, kind because Islam is not only a religion, it is political and their aim is to gain power, a political power. So it's not like the other religions where it is more, you know, in your private sphere, you know, that you can be a Catholic or Protestant or whatsoever, but Islam has a political aim. And I have to add that in all the European countries, and uh, it is quite recent in Belgium, an org organization started um, a group, Sharia for Belgium. They had Sharia for the UK, Sharia for Holland, Sharia for Belgium. They didn't dare to do that 10 or 20 years ago, but now they are not afraid. Oh, you know? well. So they show their true faces. They show their true faces. Yeah, there is a phrase in Islam, I believe it's called takia, though I may have mispronounced it slightly, that pretty much means smile in your face when you're weak and then when you're strong, take over. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, paraphrasing Stevie Wonder, I might say, no Sharia law, no, not in the USA. And if we're going to stop it, we better stop it now. Would you agree? Yes, we have to. You well, have to. Th thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, it has been terribly enlightening, and I hope those who need the enlightening are listening. So once again, thank you so much for coming on the show. And for now, this is uh, King David the First. <laughs> Say, bye for now.